and we're back for another daily cribbage. So I'm thinking today that we'll have another battle against the computer. On Sunday I'm going to take on the impossible computer, but uh, leading up to that, why don't we have another go against the hard computer? So, we're going to explain everything as we go along, and hopefully we're going to get a win out of this. But we probably have to play quite well to do that. So, we're at 0-0, zero, zero, and we're playing as Pwn. And so what's the goal? Well, if we had the opportunity to, we could try and get 18 points to get to the first positional milestone. However, our hand says otherwise. It says you've got, uh, you've got an okay number of points and you have some options about what you want to keep. Notice that we've got a lot of even numbers. We've got 2, 4, an 8, and a 10. Even numbers don't add to 15. This is a fun fact for you. So if we want to keep combos that add to 15, we need to keep the ace. And one of the ways to do that would be to throw away 4-8. This keeps us ace 2-2, two, two. it allows us to hit double runs if we had a 3, and it also gives us the opportunity to get a few more 15s if we get another 10 on top, which happens quite a lot of the time. So this hand is going to frequently score us 6 points. Another way that we could proceed is we could uh, keep something like ace 2-2-4, two, two, and this is going to score us 6 points when we hit a 10 on top, but this is a little less safe in the crib because 8, 10 are closer together and 9s are going to make a run there. Other things to consider, well, if we, if we really believe that a 3 is going to come up on top, then maybe we should uh, keep something else. Maybe we would keep, I don't know, 2, 2, 4, 8, but since this only has 2 points in hand, it's not really worth it. If the 8 was a 9, then this would be probably the play. Um, unfortunately not. So I'm going to go with 4-8. It's not the safest thing to throw in the crib. Ace-10 ace is much safer. Doesn't make as many runs through the ace and uh, the 8 does and the 10 doesn't immediately combo with other things that are going to be thrown in the crib, um, like random 7s. Of course, our opponent does throw away fives into the crib, but no, the ten, 10 is a bit safer than the eight. Um, so, yeah, in this case, I'm just going to go four, eight. Uh, let's see if we can hit that three. No, the king. King is fairly inert here, so that's quite nice. And by when I say inert, I mean that it doesn't really combo with many things. Uh, when, it, when I say inert, it means that the... The combo potential is quite low. I'm going to start with an ace. And the point is that, well, I wanted to save the, the double two for maybe the end of the play. See if we can get the pair. And if our opponent hadn't played a 10, then my plan was to go 10 and then leave the double two for later. However, now playing the 10 is very risky because not only do we get 10 away from 31, um, our opponent could also have a jack quite easily and they could get a run and, and two points for 31. That's not something I'm interested in finding out, so I'm just going to play out my twos now. So our opponent shows us a lot of really strong hands. Let's play, the, let's play a little game. What does our opponent have left over? Well, the thing that we would guess that our opponent has is a jack because uh, we haven't seen any jacks so far in our hand, and a jack would make our opponent's hand as strong as possible, and your, the hands that your opponent has most often are the strongest hands. They had a 9, which is actually good news for us, because that means our opponent's hand is only worth 8 points. Okay. And zero points in the crib, so 4-8 paid, paid off there. If we compare 4-8 to, say, the second best, which is 8-10, we can see that the uh, one of the differences in, in the crib, apparently it's only a very small difference. I thought it would be a bit of a larger difference than that. Oh, well. Um, okay. 
let's move on to the next hand. So, after that first round, our opponent's at 10 and we're at 6. So, we're looking to try and get another 10 points somehow. How can we do that? Well, our opponent, or our hand, naturally splits into sort of three pieces. We've got a, we've got a four, we've got a seven, eight, and we've got a, a jack, queen, king. So let's just get rid of the seven, eight. And the four, in some sense, does go with our jack, queen, king because it has the potential uh, to make us some 15s if we get an ace on top. Now... If we were really desperate for points, with just a few points, then we would pair this king. Unfortunately, we are slightly desperate for points because... No, 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 sorry. I was going to say that um, we are very desperate for points, but actually we're doing just fine here because we've got three points in hand and we've actually got five points guaranteed in crib with the nine, so... Um, we're already making great progress towards our positional milestone. We don't need to risk anything. We can just play the four. Our opponent has a random ace, which probably indicates they have fours as well, because they've played a ten. Um, and our opponent might also have some other ten cards as well, such as another king or queens or jacks. I'm going to offload the jack. Offloading the jack means that uh, our opponent doesn't have the potential to pair it later. So now that our opponent's playing their second king, I'm going to pair this because they don't have another king as often. And our opponent just has a random eight, so only two points there for our opponent. And we've got our three points here, we've got six points in the crib. Uh, run was a little bit longer than we expected, so we're doing great. We're at 19, our opponent's at 15. Let's see how we can continue. Two, double, three, seven, jack, queen. We're at 19, our opponent's at 15. This is really classic. When you see two, double, three, it pairs really well with a 10. And so in this case, if we keep the jack, then we've got six points in hand, two, three, jack, two, three, jack, double, three. And seven, queen is also a very safe discard. Uh, one of my rules of thumb with, is that the safest discards are those where you take a middling, middling card, so a six through nine, and you put it with a ten. So in particular, jack, queens, and kings, but also 10s as well. So for instance, a 6-10 is a nice safe discard and a 9-king is a really safe discard. They get less safe the closer together the values of the cards get. So for instance, 9-10 is not as safe as 6-king, say. Okay, in this case we've got 7-queen. There's a good gap between those two cards and it's a middling card and a high card. Very safe kind of hand. And we also have the potential to improve our hand significantly. Fours and aces are really great. Twos, more threes, perfect. And even just another 10, that's going to take our hand up to 10 points. And we'd like to see it. Four is lovely, and we're not going to play anything too complicated. We're just going to lead a three, and we'll triple a three if we get one. And otherwise, we're going to play a two. Why do we play the two there over the three? It's in order to sort of round out what our hand is. I don't think the computer or our AI opponent really is taking this into account, but against humans, you want to make your hand the as least surprising as possible. And that means that the potential hands that you could have are uh, as numerous as possible. So. By playing three and then two and then jack, uh, we haven't given away anything about our hand. We're just saying, um, from our opponent's perspective, we can have all, all of the tens. We could have uh, more threes, more twos. We could even have an ace or a four. Um, 
So our hand becomes very disguised and unpredictable that way. On the other hand, if we have played out three and then three um, and then jack, uh, our last card would be much more predictable as a two because that would be one of the few ha one of the few cards that actually would give us points. So that's a that's a somewhat deep concept, but I would like to like to give you guys everything I'm thinking about. So after three rounds, we've made it to 32. Our opponent has a nice crib there and a reasonable hand, taking them up to 30. So our opponent also admits that they had a good hand. And here, uh, how does our hand break it down? We've got a seven, eight, nine, which is really nice. We've also got a five and a jack and a four. The five and jack go together and we don't really need to keep the four with them, uh, so let's do that. We get a six, which takes our hand up to eight points, and our opponent leads a ten. So in this case, we can actually think about the, the magic eleven. So if our opponent has, is going to play out another ten card, then our four and our seven are going to make a nice combo here. So let's do that. So, yep, they play another ten, and we... Get, and we utilize the magic 11 to give us this 31. Now, our opponent so far has shown double 10, 9. And if our opponent has another 9, then that means that their hand is worth 8 points. So if we pair this 9 and they triple us, we're going to be a little bit behind. On the other hand, if our opponent has an 8, then our opponent has a 10 point hand and they're doubling the eight. If we play eight and they play eight, then that would take them to, uh, that would take them to 42. Hmm. I'm just thinking what I want to do about that. The thing is that my opponent has more eights than nines. So I'm going to play around. I'm going to play around the eight and the nine. But they just had a six and we didn't need to worry all along. That's often the case. So they had a different eight point hand. Um, and we didn't give that one any points. So all is fine. All right. 47, 39. And we look down at a monster. Look at this monster. Three, four, double, five. Is there anything noteworthy to say here? If it was our crib, then we would have so many choices. We would start considering things like two, three, and throwing away double five, and throwing away five jack of diamonds. But in this case, because it's our opponent's crib, there's nothing really to think about. We just get, we just keep the double run. I mean, one thing you might wonder is, well, we could keep, um, I don't know, we could keep the five-five jack together, maybe. Um, but that's simply not necessary. We we make just as many, if not more, points from that uh, from throwing away two jack. If we wanted to. Do, if we wanted to throw away the safest thing, if we wanted to play as safely as possible, I think we'd still be throwing away two jack. There's an honorable mention to be made about three four. In this case, three four is relatively safe because we hold the fives, so our opponent doesn't throw away as many fives. We also have a two that we're keeping, so our opponent doesn't really throw away many two threes, but they but they will throw them away if they have them sometimes, so you have to be careful. But 3-4 is a high variance discard. Right? When it makes points in the crib, it makes a lot of points, i.e. when it combos with a 2 or a 2-3. That's going to be a lot of points in the crib, but when it doesn't make many points, i.e. if it's going to make 6 or less points, it makes very few points. It might be part of a lot of zero point hands. So if we needed to be lucky to, in order to get something, 
we could maybe think about throwing away 3-4 for the high variance play, but it's just not necessary. Uh, we've got 12 points, and we just need to play out our hand well. Now, how do we, how do, we do that? Well, this, hand is, this kind of hand has actually caused me a lot of trouble in the past, and I still don't know the best way to deal with it. So the problem is that if we play our four here, which is an often a good way to, to play out your double runs, is to play the middle card, then we run into an immediate problem, which is what if our opponent just pairs our four? If our opponent pairs our four, then we're left, we're left in this terrible situation where we could either play a five for 13 and our opponent might start making some long runs, or uh, we have to play a three and our opponent could start playing a two or uh, play their own five. Um, but I don't think we're too unhappy about either of these situations. Now, if we wanted to, if we wanted to be sort of happy to give up points, we could play a five to begin with. And so the, so the point is, if we play a five, our opponent plays some ten, and then we get to play, say, a four, or uh, we could play the other five, and we don't have to worry about getting trapped later on. Um, but that does give up a lot of points immediately, and it's probably not necessary. I think we're happy to go into some complications, because we do have 12 points guaranteed, that takes us up to 59 points, and because of this really nice position, uh, we're happy to get even more points and uh, take our advantage to the next phase. All right, so your opponent goes nine. They could have some tens, so we're going to go to um, we're going to go to eighteen, which sets us up to play the three if our opponent plays a ten. Instead, we see an eight, which leaves us with thirty-one. Uh, we should definitely take that. It's just three points. Okay, our opponent's revealed seven, eight, nine. There's a ten on top. We're probably most worried about sevens and eights, which don't, which we're not giving away any points to. And the three here um, means that our opponent gets a few more points, but it does uh, cost them um, in that they don't have an amazing hand. So. We didn't have to worry about the seven or eight. Brennan also throws away jack two, which is not what you should discard there, right? So we threw away jack two, but our opponent's hand was two, three, seven, eight, nine jack. In that situation, I believe that the better discard is two, three. Two, three is a, way, a good way to keep um, a five. So uh, it combos with any of the tens that your opponent throws into the crib and it also is open to uh, creating runs so I think we're seeing some of the uh, some of the frayed edges of the hard AI strategy here our hand is eight double nine ten with the double run and five king so hopefully you will see that there is no other discard here that's really as good. In other situations, we would discard other things if we were needed to, say, have a really uh, safe, if we needed to play something really uh, safe on the play, we might discard double nine. Um, but that would only be in some really extreme kind of end games. We're not in any extreme end games, so we're okay at this point. Opponent leads a 10. We're so far ahead that we can actually just take this, these two points and tell our opponent that we don't care if they give us, if they play six, until we look at the jack on top of the deck. When we notice the jack on top of the deck, it actually means that our opponent's eight point hands that often contain a 10, such as so double runs that contain a 10, have actually improved to 16 points. And 16 points for our opponent seems pretty amazing, but it doesn't get them to the positional milestone. 
I think we can actually do better here and play against those hands and just play the eight, knowing that we have removal against the nines. And if our opponent has a 16 point hand, say tens through queens with a double run, so 10 jack queen with another 10 jack or queen. Uh, okay, so some of those would actually be a triple run instead of a quad run, but okay. Uh, those are worth 15 points instead of 16 points, so I think we can actually play against those hands. So I'm going to gonna play the 8 here. Opponent shows a 9, which is quite rare. And a 6 as well, okay. Uh, my play is looking worse and worse by the moment, <laughs> but actually it's all fine. Opponent only has 9 points, and... We have loads of points, of course. We're well ahead. Do I stand by what I did there? I think I do, because really the hands that we would have started losing to are going to be ones that had 16 points at that point. We gave back six points, or uh, we gave seven points away to this particular hand that scored nine. So in effect, we're turning it into a 16-point hand but we're taking away points from the 16-point hands that we're playing against. And we're hopefully you know, not giving away any points to those. Not, when I say not many, or not any, I mean not many. Here, we've got, we've got some 15s. So what do our 15s look like? We've got 2, 4, 9. Uh, we've got 6, 9. We've got a pair and a 10, and the pair of 10s also connects with the 9. So the natural discard would be 2-4 if we want to keep 4 points and our hand improving in the most ways possible. In this case, we improve on 8s and jacks. And the thing that we give up slightly by discarding 2-4 is points in the crib. Opponent will get lots of points if they discard a 3, Opponent won't get too many points if they discard high to middling cards, but if they discard a low card and a middle card, or a low card and a high card, their hand's going to be worth quite a few points. That's okay for us. We're just going to play the, the highest scoring hand, putting maximum pressure on our opponent. We don't get anything that improves our hand, and our opponent is showing off by playing the king. We're just going to play the nine here, and hope that opponent doesn't do anything uh, insane. Okay, so they've shown us eight to far eight to seven king king. So four points for our opponent, and let's see what they've got in the crib. Just a pair. All right. So we're nearing into our. Uh, final positional milestone at 96. Our hand is giving us enough points to get there. If we discard the discard the 7-6, we keep 6 points in hand, and with the point that we get on the play, we're at 94 at the very minimum. We're likely to get a couple more points in the crib, and we often are getting actually a 10-point hand here because ace-4-4-queen, four, four, if we hit a 10, then we are going to improve to 10 points. So very happy. Uh, opponent leads queen. I'm just going to pair it because if our opponent uh, makes triple queen, we have an ace that gives us 31. And I think this is a, a worthwhile exchange for us that sort of accelerates us towards 96 even harder. Couple of points in the crib, a few points on the play. Opponents at 85, we're 104. We want to close out this game as smoothly as possible. How do we do that? Well, we can actually do the same thing as we did last time. We can keep the 6 9 king, the 6 9 10 10. This time, our discard is a score, is a, you know, it's 4 7 in our opponent's crib. So this is likely to make some points. You know, if our opponent discards 8 or an ace and a 10, these kinds of things. Um, but I don't see why we shouldn't discard anything else. We could, if we wanted to play even safer, 
we could discard 710. This isn't the safest discard though, so if you remember from before, we talked about discarding a middling card and a 10. In this case, we've got a middling card of a 7 and a 10, but there are runs that involve the 7 and the 10, so this isn't the safest. If our opponent discards exactly 8, 9, or either an 8 and a 9, 8 or a 9, and a, the other one comes up uh, on the top of the deck, we do lose out a little bit. 4, 10, similarly, it doesn't, well, it doesn't make runs, it can make 15s if our opponent throws away an ace. So let's just go with the, the standard 4, 7. We get a 10. And we'll lead a 6 again. Why not? And the reason why not might be because our opponent has a 6 themselves. 6, 5. And 6, 5, 4. So very scary from our opponent. Um, they've shown us that they've got 7 points already. Um, and I assume that they have something like 14 points with another 4, 5, or 6. Or 16 points, actually, if they had a had another 5. So I guess because the, the 5 is the one that's making most points, let's play against that. Let's give the 5 fewer points. We'll play the 9. They have a jack, which is unfortunate for them because that makes a run for us. Okay, so nine points isn't quite enough to really put pressure on us. We're at 116 points. We either go out on the next play or we're going to score our way out. And this is a position where people will play very wrong. What do I mean? I think that when a lot of people see this hand, their instant reaction and almost, you know, it's almost a, um, it is almost unavoidable for some people. They're going to discard Queen King, keeping the 7, 8, 8, 9, which they know is going to score them at least 12 points, sometimes 24 points, if another 7 comes up, say. But this isn't, this isn't right at all. Um, we're looking at more than enough points to go out. We could keep, um, we could throw away eight king, which looks like a terrible discard, but this has at least five points for us. And this is going to give us uh, another card. This gives us a queen. Um, so it'll give us more options on the play. If we want to go a bit crazier, we could think, well, why not, uh, why not something else? We could also discard, I don't know, um, we could discard 8-8. Eight, eight. This will give us two 10s for the play, you know, maybe, maybe we think to ourselves a queen is not quite safe enough for the play. Maybe our opponent leads a jack and we, we're not happy to, to play a queen or a king on top of it. We have a 7 there or... Maybe, no, I, that's, that's nonsense. I think um, if our opponent, if we have um, seven, eight, nine queen or king, no matter what our opponents lead, we have a very safe discard. What are the hands that we're really worried about? It's going to be hands that score huge, 16 plus point hands. So um, qu quad runs. Quad runs are the things that we're really worried about. So we want to have as many different cards as possible in order to play around them. And there's no reason not to keep a 10. Which 10? Probably the king because it's involved in the fewest quad runs. Um, so let's do that. The other option is to... The other option is we could try and play keep 8-8 eight, eight because there are fewer 8s left and so 8-8 eight, is not going to uh, be involved in many quad runs but I think 7-8-9 king is is good enough for us. 2. Our opponent leads 8. So this allows us to completely change strategy. Um, 
if we want to, we can play the seven. Oh, no, we can't actually play the seven here. So there's a slight problem with playing the seven, which is that, OK, we score two points immediately. It takes us to one, one, eight. We need three points to win. If our opponent plays a six, then it's game over because we can either play the eight or the nine and, and win. However, if, our, if after we play the seven, our opponent plays a nine, we have to say go. And then we have to think to ourselves, what does our opponent have? Well, if our opponent reveals to us eight and nine, then what are we scared about? We're probably scared about things like double seven, meaning double seven, eight, nine, which is 12 points. So not enough to win. Or we're scared about what else? I don't think we're really scared of anything. Are there any other hands that we're scared of? I don't think so. Okay, so I've convinced myself actually. If we give away the most number of points here, um, so if our if we go seven, if we go eight, sorry, if our, our opponent's gone eight, if we play seven for fifteen, our opponent plays nine. Then our opponent showed us eight, nine. We say go. And our opponent has a six for four points. So they've, so far they've caught, they would have scored seven points on the play and shown us six, eight, nine. The biggest scoring hand that our opponent can have is uh, 10 points if they have a seven left. And in that case, we've given away um, we've given away seven points, opponent has 10 points, so that's 17 points that takes them to 118, they would need three extra points, and there's no way for, for us to give them that, we could even lead the six, <laughs> and give them the 15, uh, we could even lead the eight, sorry, and give them the 15, uh, with the, <laughs> uh, with the seven, eight, and they, they wouldn't make it, in fact, we would get the we get the run. So we're very happy actually to play the seven here. Opponent plays out the the six instead, but this of course means we instantly win with our favorite choice of either eight or nine. Okay. So that was unnecessary sort of fancy play at the end, um, but I just wanted to illustrate some of the things that you can. You, you can work out in the end game. It might have it might have been more relevant in situations where we're further behind. So overall, we got a few points on the play. Our opponent also got quite a lot of points there, 30 versus 28. We got 74 points in hand, so did a bit better than our opponent. And we got a little bit luckier in the crib. There were some suspicious dis some suspicious hands from our opponent. So uh, we can see some of the some of the reason why we got more points in our hand. Opponent might not have been playing as optimally as they could have been, but I think that was a nice demonstration of what you can do with some pretty basic strategy and a lot of thinking. So I hope you got something out of that, and I will see you in the next daily cribbage. Bye for now.